Hi, it's Sherry from A Quilting Life, and I'm here today to share with you how to put an on-point quilt together. An on-point quilt might be a daunting project for some, but it really is simple. You just have to know the steps and follow them in a particular order. So today I'm going to walk you through setting together an on-point quilt. I'm going to show you how to add the sashing and posts if your on-point quilt includes those. And we're going to talk about setting triangles for the side parts of the quilt and for the corner parts of the quilt. And we're also going to talk about how to even up your quilt before you begin to add your borders. I hope that you'll enjoy this video. It's a little bit longer than some of my other videos, but I feel like it's one that you might want to bookmark and come back to again and again when you work on this type of quilt for the first few times. So let's get started putting together an on-point quilt. Okay, I'm going to walk you through making an on-point quilt. And I'm actually going to use the smallest setting that we can use. And, but the technique is the same for any size quilt you're using. So I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to go about setting these blocks on point. And sometimes beginner or newer quilters are afraid to try this, but it's, it's really not difficult. And I'll walk you through it and hopefully you can now have fun making on point quilts. I have chosen five different quilt blocks that I love. I'm gonna make a table topper with this. The size quilt that we're going to make, be making would also be a great wall hanging. But I've chosen five six inch finished blocks from my Quilting Life 2020 block of the month. And I've cut my sashing pieces. I'm going to use this little low volume floral print. And the posts I'm going to use are just this little polka dot on navy. And I'm also going to do the inner border with the same floral that I'm using for the sashing. And I'll walk you step by step how to put this together. I've got these solid squares for the corner and setting triangles, and I'll show you what those are very soon. And I'll also have a PDF with all of the measurements so that if you're putting together a quilt like this using six inch finish blocks, you will know what size sashing and posts and setting triangle fabrics that you'll need to cut. So the first thing I like to do is figure out the layout for my blocks. And I've kind of played around with this and came up with this little layout. And so when you're making an on-point quilt, what it means is that the, the blocks will be sewn together on the diagonal, whereas a straight set quilt, they would be sewn together like this. So the, the blocks, as you look at them, are going to be on point. So that's kind of what that term refers to. And we are going to have sashing. Now you can do an on point quilt without sashing, but since it's, it's really almost this, the same technique and put it together, putting it together, I thought I'd show it to you with the sashing so that you would know how to, to put together a quilt with sashing. The only difference is that if there isn't any sashing, you're just sewing the block to the block and you're not having a sashing strip in between. But I like to go ahead and lay this all out before I start sewing. That way I can compare you know that the amount of strips that the pattern told me to cut is, is good with what I have. Um, and then sometimes I can find out that if I have a strip left over, I can notice a mistake that I might have made before it happens. So I really do like to lay all of this out. We'll save this inner border for later. And I like to put the, the little posts out as well, right at the beginning. Okay. 
Okay, I've got all of my blocks, all of my sashing, all of my posts laid out. And now we're going to actually use, uh, uh, cut these squares into triangles and place them where they're going to go in the quilt. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the corner and the side setting triangles right now. When you're sewing an on-point quilt, the pattern should tell you to cut two squares that you will use for the corner setting triangles and a number of squares anywhere from one up on up for the side setting uh, triangles. It just depends on how many side setting triangles there are in your quilt. For ours, we're only gonna need four and so we're just going to use one square cut twice diagonally. But first we'll cut the corner setting triangles and those are cut once diagonally and your pattern will tell you what size of square to cut and that you cut it once diagonally and that means that you just cut it in half on the diagonal one time and that will give you your four corner setting triangles. So now that we have those cut we will set those aside. They will actually be added to our quilt center last. Now this is the fabric square for the side setting triangles and your pattern will tell you how many squares to cut and it will tell you to cut this, these squares twice diagonally. And so we're gonna, we're gonna actually do the same thing that we did with the corner. We're gonna cut it on the diagonal once Next, you'll want to turn your mat. If it's easy for you to kind of walk on the other side of the table, you can do that too. But I like to keep these in place when I cut so the cutting is more accurate. And then we're gonna cut it on the diagonal again. Okay, so now we have cut these twice on the diagonal. And as I mentioned, if you're making a bigger quilt, you might have to do this with several different squares to get enough side setting triangles. Be sure to keep your side setting triangles kind of separated from your corner triangles. They're often um, similar in size, but these side setting triangles are always gonna be a bit larger. So um, just keep them separate, don't get them in the same pile. Okay, we're gonna go back, I'm gonna, put our quilt blocks back on the table and I'll show you where to place these triangles. Okay, now that we've cut the side setting triangles and the corner triangles, I like to lay them out where they're gonna go in my quilt. Again, this really helps you to know that you have the right number of pieces and that everything is placed where it needs to be placed before you sew your quilt together. Okay, so these are the side setting triangles. They go on the four sides. And then as I mentioned, the corner pieces will go on the four corners. And they'll actually be sewn last. Okay, so this is really what I like to do. I like to you know, lay this all out and make sure that I've got everything as it should be before I start sewing. I feel like this really helps prevent some simple mistakes from happening. The next step we're gonna do is we are going to sew, with this quilt, we have three rows. We have the row with the first block, we have the row with the th these three blocks, and we have a row with this block. And I'm not counting these kind of sashing post rows. Right now, we're just gonna sew together the block rows. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew sashing, block, sashing for this row. Same thing for this row first. Sashing, block, sashing. And for this row, sashing, block, sashing, block, sashing, block, sashing. And we're going to press all of our seams to the sashing strips. So that really helps you keep the points on your quilt blocks and make everything 
the same. So I will go to the sewing machine and I will do the sewing of these three rows, blocks and sashing strips, and come back and show you the next step. Okay, I went over to the sewing machine and I sewed my block and sashing pieces together. And as I mentioned, I pressed the seams out toward the sashing pieces. So I did this for the top row, the center row, and the bottom row. And while I was there, I also sewed together the sashing post pieces. And we have four of those for this quilt, and I also pressed toward the sashing. We want to do all our pressing toward the sashing when you have sashing. If you don't have sashing, let me just put this in right now, what you would do is you would, um, you would press one row one direction and the row above it you would press the seams the other direction so the seams could nest. Okay, so we had two of these long rows. And the final piece. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to add these sashing post rows to our block rows and we will do that before we add any of these triangles. The triangles are all going to be added last. So to this top row we're just going to add this piece to the top of it. Same thing down here, we're going to add this piece to the bottom of that block. But our center row is going to get a sashing post strip shown to, sewn to the top and the bottom. Now one thing that might be different when you do a different size on point quilt is sometimes the center row only has a strip sewn to one side. Just depends on how many rows you're doing and how long the rows are. But as long as you lay everything, all of the pieces that you've been told to cut out, as long as you lay them all out before you start sewing, you shouldn't get confused. And you might have to lay it out on a bed or a floor when you're working on a larger quilt, but it's just really helpful if you just lay everything out. It prevents a lot of mistakes. Okay, so I'm gonna go over to the sewing machine now. I'm gonna sew the post rows to the top and bottom blocks, and the two post rows on either side of my center row. And then I'll come back and we'll talk about adding the triangles. Okay, I'm back from the sewing machine and I added the sashing strip post rows to my block rows. And I've got the one row added to the top row and the one to the bottom row and then the two rows added to the center section. And you can tell that since everything was pressed to the sashing, all the seams just nested really well when I put everything together. So the next step that you're going to do is we are going to add the side setting triangles. And I think this is a place where sometimes people get confused. They want to add those side setting triangles before these post and sashing strip rows have been added, but that is not the way it works. You add the post and sashing strip rows first, and then you add the side triangles. So the side triangles have been cut and they do have bias edges, so you want to be really careful with them. What I generally do is I just flip it over gently and I will stick just a, a single pin to keep it together. And kind of do that to the other side as well and just use a pin. Now these these four triangles for the corners are going to go on last so we're not going to sew anything there but we are going to add these and I do like to pin them so I get them going it's really easy to get these triangle pieces turned around in the wrong direction so by, by using just a pin, you can make sure that you don't flip them the wrong, flip the triangles the wrong way. Um, and if you want to use more pins, you can as well. The, the point of the triangle will extend beyond the block there, but it will line up evenly 
the 90 degree angle of the triangle will line up evenly with one side of the block. And, and it's the opposite as the top and the bottom. So up here it's extending beyond the top and the 90 degree part of the triangle is matching up at the bottom of this block. So I'm gonna go to the sewing machine. I'm gonna sew these triangles together and these triangles together with this block row. And then we will be back to actually start sewing our rows together. Okay, I've sewn the side setting triangles where they need to go. And let me just show you again. I pressed to the sashing. That's one thing you wanna remember when you're doing an on point quilt with sashing. Or really, even a straight set quilt with, press, with sashing, you're always gonna to press towards the sashing. So I've pressed those towards the sashing. And now I'm ready to sew my three rows together. And again, we're gonna add these last. At this point, I really do like to use more pins to make sure that all of the posts match up. And I will generally put a pin at each place where the, where the post is. And I'll put one at the end of the row and one kind of in the middle of the block. And so again, I'm gonna pin right here where our sashing post is. And I usually take that pin and have it on, I stick the pin in on one side of the seam and put it back through on the other side of the seam. And then at the end, the middle, and I'm going to grab the middle of this block and stick a pin in it as well. Okay, so I'm going to go to the machine. I'm going to sew this together. I'm going to press toward the sashing, and then I will also sew this side together so that when I come back, I'll have the center section all sewn together except for the four outer triangles. Okay, back from the sewing machine again, and our quilt center is complete. Everything is sewn together except for our four corner setting triangles. And I've pressed everything towards these sashing rows. So all of the seams matched up. The, you'll notice that the triangle edges will extend and that's fine. We will be trimming this up at the end after we get these four setting triangle, corner setting triangles on. But what, what I do next is I actually just kind of fold my corner setting triangle in half and do a finger press and so that I have a real, you know, tiny little line. And I take a ruler and I find the center point of my block. Just go right down the middle. And I make sure and line that little finger press up with that center point, and I'll just, just use one pin. And that really helps me keep the corner pieces centered. I'm just gonna, the center of the block. and we'll do the last one. And then when I come back from the sewing machine, I will show you how we trim it. And th at that point, you add the borders just like you would for a regular quilt, a straight set quilt. Okay. So I'm going to take it over. I'm going to sew the four corner triangles on. I actually will also press these toward the sashing. Um, I feel like in the past, sometimes I have just pressed them out 
um, depending on your particular quilt and you know look at it and see what you want to do it doesn't matter so much at this point which direction you press it so I'll go sew that press it bring it back and, and we'll talk about adding the borders okay I'm back from the sewing machine I just wanted to show you I did end up pressing these the seams on the corner triangles out I just realized it, there was it was going to create a lot less bulk um, so I did press all of those four seams out okay now you'll notice that our piece doesn't look exactly square and that's normal at this point for an on-point quilt we've we've used all of these different triangle pieces and in, introduced bias into our quilt and so what I love to do is kind of square up my quilt before I add the borders and if you have a long ruler this one at this point is about 21 and a half inches square and so I'll be able to use this 24 inch 24 and a half inch ruler to square up my edges when I have a larger quilt sometimes I will actually get multiple rulers and use them um, and with a larger quilt it's also really helpful to have a square ruler so that you can square up both sides at once Okay, I am actually going to grab a large square ruler and show you with that ruler and with this ruler how you can square up your quilt. So I grabbed, I grabbed this large square ruler just to kind of show you what you can do. You want to make sure that you have a quarter of an inch beyond the point of each post. And so what I like to do is line it up. So I've got a quarter of an inch here. I've got a quarter of an inch here. And then I also make sure at the top on both of those seams that I have a quarter of an inch. And I will also look at the other lines on the ruler. I've got a diagonal line right here. And it's really lining up well with the block. So I feel like this is really square and really straight. And I will kind of start back here I'm not going to start all the way back here because I'm going to trim this when I move the ruler down to this section so I'm going to trim just this portion of the quilt right now and then I'll I'll flip it and do the rest so I'm going to go up and I'm going to come over okay so now I am going to flip my quilt And I'm going to do the next corner section the same way. I'm going to make sure that I've got quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch. This one still, this had already been trimmed down here. So I'm going to move that up just a bit. And sometimes you're not trimming very much off sometimes you are so just you know flip it and just make sure that you because you don't want to cut off any of these points when you're sewing your border and so I making sure I've got it here here move it up Then we're going to be able to flip it and this will be our final corner. You can tell that this is where I started. And this is where I started. So we'll be doing our final corner. Again, the quarter inch. Quarter inch. I'm going to look at that diagonal line and it is just really looking good right there. Just make sure. Okay. Okay, just some simple trimming. 
And now we've got a, a, a nicely trimmed quilt center. At this point, like I mentioned, the adding the borders is going to be the same as for a square set quilt. The only thing that you might notice is that you have some odd measurements with an on-point quilt. So I like to take a measurement of all four sides before I begin adding the borders. So this one is about 21 and 5 eighths. 21 and 5 eighths. Yep, 21 and a half. Let's see. So they're all, all of my sides are either 21 and a half, 21 and 5 eighths. And so uh, that's the size that I'm going to use for my, my first two um, side border pieces. If there were a bigger variation in that, uh, I would I would check these two sides first and make sure but mine are just really really close so that means my quilt is pretty I'm gonna take my border strips now and I am going to cut the two side pieces and then I'm going to um, sew those on press them measure and cut the two pieces and what I like to do for this is just gonna measure one more time. Okay, it's actually just a tiny bit bigger than I no noticed before. And what I like to do is I'm not going to cut these, that measurement first. I'm going to use a pin and mark my measurement. This will allow me to be more accurate. So I'm gonna trim the left side and then I'm going to put a pin in my border piece. I'm going to measure it with the ruler just to make sure because my, the ruler is always going to be more accurate than your mat. Okay and like I said I'm going to use pins right here I'm going to put a pin in each piece. Okay, and then I'm just going to cut this a little bit past. And I, I will be trimming that later. But then what I do is I will Lay this on top of my quilt. With my pin at the bottom edge. I will pin that and sew it. And I will do the same thing over here. And after we've sewn, we'll press and then we'll trim these edges. Okay, I actually went ahead and added the side borders, pressed and trimmed, and then I added the top and bottom borders. And I, I just wanna show you quickly how I trim those. It, it's really kind of the same method that I used when I was squaring up a quilt. So I just take a square ruler and make sure that it's straight on both the side and the top. And I just kind of cut that little piece off there. And then I'm going to do the same thing where I added the other border. Just gonna get the large ruler. And again, just trim that off. Okay, so a lot of times with these points, I, I kind of wait till this point to pick my outer border fabric. And with this one, I've decided to use this navy print for my outer border. It will kind of pick up the navy in the center block and in the sashing posts. And 
I will go ahead and add this and we'll pop up a picture of the video after I get it added. If you want even more detailed instructions about adding borders to a quilt, we do have a previous video on that that we'll put a link to so that you can go and look at that for step by step. But basically this video has walked you through all the steps that you need to do to do any on point quilt, not just a small one, a large one. All of the steps are the same. And if you haven't made an on point quilt before, I hope you'll have a lot of fun putting one together soon. So there we have the how to put together an on point quilt tutorial. I know it was a little bit longer than normal, but there, there really are quite a few steps to this and they need to be followed in a specific order. I hope that you'll come back to this video again and again as you work on these types of quilts. And if you enjoyed the video, we would love for you to hit the like button and share with a friend and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks so much for stopping by.